everybody, it's me, Jill, and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of New York City, Season 12, Episode 6, Just the Sip. All right, you guys know what that's referring to. My favorite countess and yours has broken her sobriety and taken a sip of someone's drink. And uh, let's just see how that all evolves. All right, let's get started. All right, we are opening episode six at Tavern on the Green. Luann is meeting Jacques there for lunch. Um, well, Luann calls him Jack. Of course, she also calls Sonia Sonia. So anyway, she, I'm so happy for Jacques. Jack came to me at a time in my life when I had just gotten divorced and it was great. And now Jack is engaged and I'm so happy for him. So Luann is telling Jack, I'm just going to call him Jacques. Luann is telling Jacques that she's done with probation and she's trying to figure out what to do about drinking again. You know, I'm with the girls all the time and they're always drinking and I'm tempted. She said, I'm wondering if I can maybe go back to just having a glass of wine with dinner. I, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I made a promise to myself for right now that I wouldn't drink because I had just gotten off of probation. Yeah, maybe wait a hot second. But she asks his opinion and he goes, well, you know, I am a wine merchant, so. <laughs> but uh, one glass of red with dinner. One glass, not two, no, one or none. And he said, but you know, I am not afraid for you because I know you are very strong. You make a plan and you will follow the plan. So whatever you decide. In Luann's confessional, having the support of Jacques is so important to me because he knows me so well. And because he gave you the green light to drink again, basically. Oh my. Jacques is doing stand-up now. And I mean, I don't know why I'm laughing. He, he could be very good at it, but he did just say he was a wine merchant. So <laughs> I'm guessing this is something he does on the side. I don't know. Luann is hosting some kind of a function and Jacques is going to be one of the comedians. Oh no. Luann is also going to be doing some comedy. She's trying out some new jokes that she might use in her new show, Mary F. Kill. I can't wait. Now we are with Dorinda, who is visiting her old townhouse. She walks by and she goes, hey, I can't believe I put in this gate and it's still good. What does that mean? You didn't install it yourself, did you? I mean, why would it not still be good? Was it cheap? <laughs> like, I'm very curious about this. Dorinda's talking about all the memories she has uh, with that house, that Richard carried her over the threshold there and all the Christmases they had. And we're seeing a bunch of photos and there's a picture of Dorinda and Richard and Hillary Clinton. And uh, first of all, Dorinda looks so beautiful there and secondly it's just a reminder of how far she has fallen with john pedestrian i somehow don't see a picture of dorinda and john pedestrian with hillary you know i i, I, I could be wrong i do not know where hillary takes her pantsuits to be dry cleaned so they could be hobnobbing with her all the time but it just feels to me like Dorinda's past life was quite different than her current. Okay, so we are having lunch at Nello's, which is a restaurant that she and Richard used to go to every Wednesday night. And she knows the maitre d' and she's meeting Ramona and Sonia and Elise. Yes, Elise is like the new Barbara. Only I don't, I find her much less offensive. Do you guys know how much I resent it, Barbara? <laughs> she was in like every scene. I was annoyed. I didn't know who she was. She was not a housewife. She was a friend of, and she got so much airtime that I started to just like really become bothered by her. Of course, in the end, she was the sane one and I loved her, but she was not cut out to be a real housewife. 
and she knew it by the end and did not return. I don't know if she was asked back, but I'm just saying even if she was, I don't think she would have come back. Yeah, it was more than she had bargained for. So let's see how Elise does. I mean, she's not in it a ton. She just happens to show up like every episode. So now Dorinda says something about the maitre d' loved Richard and he goes, I miss him very much. And Dorinda goes, yeah, so do I. Ramona's confessional, she goes, ever since Dorinda has been remodeling in the Berkshires, it's bringing up a lot of memories. She talks about Richard all the time. All right, so they're all sitting down and Sonia starts squeezing this like, 32 ounce bottle of something. It's probably teamy. I don't know. Uh, into one of the glasses at the restaurant. I don't, I couldn't see what she was squeezing it into. But um, her hand is shaking like this while she's putting it in. And Ramona goes, why is your hand shaking? What's wrong with you? And she goes, oh, um, this is my drink I have to have. I've been fasting for three days now. Yeah, because I put my dress on for the fashion show and I broke the zipper. And then in her confessional, she tells us that she does this detox every once in a while where she fasts and she only has like clear soups and teas and water with the occasional snack bar or olive. <laughs> snack bar, occasionally. Um, you know what's funny though? I remember that. Do you remember, I believe it was... Uh, one of Bethany's events for skinny girl jeans. Sonia came and she kept bothering the bartender for like olives. Do you guys remember something like that? Yeah, she was probably on one of those cleanses. I so the ladies are talking about Leah a little bit. They like Leah. Dorinda had a nice conversation with her where she said, you know, Tinsley's very open with me. I'm wondering if it's your approach with Tinsley. And so Dorinda is hopeful that maybe Leah can facilitate some sort of uh, coming together for her and Tinsley. Then they talk about Luann, who's going to see Jacques in the comedy show. And yes, I guess, I don't know if they're all going, but uh, I heard a couple of yeses. And then they were talking about Luann and is she drinking? Now, this is what I like about Elise. She does not say much, but what she does say is usually impactful. <laughs> she asked Ramona if Luann was drinking and Ramona said, no, but she's just taking it day by day. And I think that's the right way to go. Elise goes, so she's not committing long-term to not drinking? I see you, Elise. <laughs> Ramona just said, I think that's setting you up for failure. And the way she's doing it is the right way. She doesn't want to drink now, and that's fine. Okay, the next scene is with my spin-off goals, Tinsley and Dale. Please, bravo. They need a show of their own. They're sitting in a restaurant, and uh, Tinsley tells us that Dale likes to come into the city as much as possible. And now she has even more of a reason to see her little grand dogs. Strawberry and shortcake. And Dale's like, I love them, Tinsley, but they are a handful. Yes, they are, Tinsley said. You should have seen them when I first got them with Bruce or something like that. Dale, speaking of which, Tinsley says, Bruce and I, we're done. Yeah, completely done. And Dale goes, I never even got to meet him. And Tinsley's like, yeah, well, maybe there was a reason for that. But anyway, yeah, it's fine. It ended amicably and I, you know, we're, we're over. It is what it is. Dale, well, I really couldn't see you moving to Chicago. Excuse me? <laughs> Dale's going to have to get a real big dose of Chicago because Tinsley is moving there. And strawberry and shortcake, I assume. But what Dale says is, well, of course you did have another Chicago fella. And Tinsley says, yeah, well, I mean, I think part of the reason I was attracted to Bruce is that he was from Chicago. Dale, you're kidding. <laughs> Come on, Dale. What's wrong with Chicago? I mean, other than the weather. So um, Tinsley admits that, you know, she thought maybe it was because like that's where Scott was and Dale's like, oh. 
in her confessional, she's like, oh, God, was it? I don't know. Like, maybe I just thought I'd be in Chicago and maybe I'd run into Scott. Ugh. So she knows that what she's saying is cringy. But, you know, I guess it does prove that she loves him. Right? Oh, my God. Dale masterfully works between cutting her daughter down and then building her up real quick just so that she can cut her down again. It, it's like a ballet. She's perfected it through the years. And it is just so dysfunctional. She tells Tinsley she doesn't understand why Bruce would have wanted her anyway. Because, you know, you, you're childless. And what use would he have for you? Yeah, cuts her down like that. And then she's like, but anyway, listen, <laughs> let's talk about the fashion show. How great did it feel? And Tinsley gets all bright and happy. It felt great. She just, she is on that roller coaster with Dale. They are just strapped in right next to each other uh, for eternity, I think. She did it again by telling her, listen, I think you are great. We're not going to let those ladies gang up on you, Tinsley. I think you're great. You are accomplished. You have done things in your life. The only thing, and, and just hear, hear me out, and that's just because I think you will be disappointed, is for you to have a child. Wah, wah. Yeah. She wants Tinsley to have a baby before she croaks. And that is why I love her. Okay, next we are in Englewood, New Jersey with Sonia. Is it her company headquarters? I I don't know. It's weird. It's like it's like a house and it looks to be a sort of a residential area. And then you just you hear the voiceover of this very creaky door and she's greeted at the door by Laura, the VP of Sonia Morgan Brands. So maybe it isn't just Sonia by Sonia Morgan. This might be the umbrella of everything, like the toaster, oven, the clothes, the who knows what else she's got going on. <laughs> Ugh. Things don't look great financially for Sonia Morgan Brands. She's out there with her, I don't know, another VP, Gaurav, I think his name is. And this guy is showing her all the financials and 5,000 lost. And she goes, okay, but that was like the first year. Okay, then nothing zero was the second year. And she goes, well, we didn't do much that second year. So then what about that? Is that, then you said things were really starting to happen. So what is that? Is that a profit? Oh, that's a loss. Okay, well, that was the fashion show. What year was that? 2017 and she goes all right well when can we start seeing some profits and he goes well the problem is you you haven't sold anything beyond three to five hundred pieces that's why we're adding more products if this feels like a shark tank nightmare <laughs> and i only say shark tank because that is my only experience with the business but i feel like if sonia came into the shark tank all the sharks would be out your fashion show was a nightmare and for those reasons, I'm out. She's like, okay, well, I mean, did we get more sales from the fashion show? No, we did not. The other girl, Laura, is like, oh, she looks devastated. It's bad, guys. Okay. Next, we have a little throwaway scene where we check in with Leah, and she's on the phone with Rob. Last week, I asked you guys if he was cute or was it just me? I only heard from one of you so far that said, no, Rob is not cute. <laughs> So I will take your word for it because I was not sure. They're talking about how neither of them are dating and they really should. Well, Leah was saying this. Rob said, I'm not going to date anyone. I'm busy. And she goes, I'm busy too, but I'm lonely and I, I want to meet someone. And then he asked her if she had talked to her mom yet. And she said, no, she's still not talking to me. In Leah's confessional, she said, this is crazy. I'm going to drink sometimes. And every time I have a drink, my mom can't just stop talking to me. That's crazy. So, yeah, I, you know, she's an adult woman. I don't know the whole story, but I imagine that her mom is just really fearful. Now we are back with Luann. 
We are at the venue where this event is taking place, the fundraiser for, I think it's an anti-bullying thing. Oh God, you guys, I just thought of that fundraiser that Ramona was in charge of with that poor woman. Shoot, I can't remember her name now because Ramona kept saying it wrong, but it was about child sexual abuse. Do you remember that? It was horrifying. Anyway, I'm hoping this is just as bad. <laughs> The event is like co-hosted by this woman, Chanel, who has a podcast, Chanel in the City, I think Luann said. So now we're at this venue called Slate and Luann is there first. And I guess there's like an indoor slide. And in any case, that's where the comedy show is going to be. Oh, okay. This fundraiser is also for the Fortune Society, which helps people who have been incarcerated get back on their feet. Okay, now we are in the car with Leah and Ramona. Who, what is, Leah has managed to do what no other newbie has been able to do before now. And that is really, I think, kind of ingratiate herself in with the OGs, especially Ramona, who doesn't normally accept anyone. I think Ramona genuinely likes Leah. Anyway, they're riding together, and Leah said, I have a confession to make. And Ramona goes, oh, no, what? And she said, you told me to go make up with my mom. And she said, I texted her. Ramona goes, oh, you have to go there. And she said, I know, I know, I couldn't do that. And I texted her, and I said, Mom, this is really silly. We need to make up. I want to start talking again. Life is too short. And she never responded to me. And Ramona said, of course not, because she's angry. You have to go see her in person because, you know, she's thinking back to the past and now she's pulling away from you. And Leah's like, I know. I mean, I just feel like there's something genuine there. Like Ramona really cares and wants her to repair her relationship with her mom. And like, is it just me? I used to be more cynical than this, I think. Oh my God, you guys, who, who is this Ramona? I think she's giving really sound advice. Ramona, Ramona Singer, turtle time. Ramona Singer, fashion show, Ramona Singer, is now providing pearls of wisdom? <laughs> Where am I? Uh, yeah, Leah starts crying and she said, this is crazy. I'm a mom too. I understand that moms need respect or whatever, but I feel like she is judging me on my failures and not my successes. And my successes outweigh my failures in my life. I should be judged on my success, but she won't. Ramona said, yeah, because she's afraid of your drinking, you're going to ruin all the successes in your life and go back to drinking, and she's fearful. She's afraid you're gonna throw it all away. In Leah's confessional, she said, Ramona and my mom are like complete opposites, but having Ramona's attention right now in this maternal way is really been comforting for me. Who knew she had it in her? I don't think I've ever seen her this maternal with Avery. Avery used to be the parent. I mean, listen, I'm happy about it all. It's just throwing me for a loop. All right, so all the ladies are there. Jacques' fiance is there too. I should have mentioned that earlier. Luann is making this ridiculously over-the-top gesture about how great she thinks she is. And Oh, Jacques, she's beautiful. And oh, I'm so happy. Yeah. Nobody is that happy for their ex to be getting married particularly when you're divorced and you have no one on the horizon. I'm not saying she's not happy for him or she doesn't care for him. What I'm saying is no one's that happy. And I should also mention that his fiance looks really normal. So Jacques has gone in a different direction this second time around. She's beautiful, but I just think she doesn't look like a housewife. Let's put it that way. Speaking of people who look like a housewife, Elise is there again. I'm going to stop mentioning it all the time because 
she probably was supposed to be a housewife. She's probably like Sutton, and I don't remember hearing about it, or I never did hear about it, and now I'm just surprised that this woman is on all the time. So I'm gonna stop talking about it. Dorinda suggests that she and Tinsley and Leah have lunch together, just the three of them, because Leah is her voice of reason. And Leah's like, yeah, that's great. I think it's a great idea. Tinsley in her confessional is like, uh, I don't like this idea. I don't need anybody else there. We'll see how that goes. Jacques leans over and asks Ramona, have you ever bullied anyone? Because it's, you know, this anti-bullying thing. And she goes, have I? No. And he goes, oh, come on, tell the truth. And then we get a montage going back to 2012. You know, it's not bullying, but she's just rude to everyone. Anyway, it's just really funny because we get this whole montage. It ends with her, that song. You look old for your age. I look young for my age. And that is that. And Tinsley goes, you're a bitch. <laughs> Ramona, why? What did I say? <laughs> There's the Ramona I remember. Not this nurturing woman who is helping Leah out in the car on the way over, but the Ramona from 2012 to present day. Then Jacques says to Dorinda, have you ever bullied anyone? We, we take a little trip through time with Dorinda now. I'd put an easy pass on that vagina with your Holland Tunnel. <laughs> that was classic, though. I would never take that back. And that leads us all the way to three weeks ago when she was bullying poor little Tinsley. Kindergarten starting! Her answer to Jacques is, I was actually the person in the playground who used to fight the bullies. Now we have Luann, Dorinda, and Ramona sitting together. Dorinda says, you haven't had a drink since being off probation? And she goes, no, I haven't. You know, I'm used to it now. I have a Coke or something like that. And Ramona's like, she's taking it day by day. And today's the day. Oh, so Dorinda's theory is that you're not an alcoholic. I've always said that you're not an alcoholic. Tom drove you to drink, literally. Literally? He drove her to the bar? Is that what she means? Anyway, I think it's a little far-fetched to blame your drinking problem on another person, but I guess that's the direction we're going tonight. I guess the show is maybe about to start. Everyone's like seated. And Luann's part of it is, I guess she's going to say a few funny things. And then she's going to say, and just to set the record straight, I never effed the pirate. And ladies and gentlemen, here's Jacques. And I don't know if she's getting nervous or what, but she goes, I need some water. And she grabs a drink that's on the table and she goes, is this water? Ramona goes, no, honey, no, that's all vodka. She tries to take it from her. Luann pulls it away from her. And takes a sip, puts it down. Then she's like, takes another sip, puts it down. And Dorinda goes, well, there you go. You're, it's done. You're, it's over. And she goes, yeah. Picks it up, takes a third sip. Oh, that's good. I feel like that's a little bit worrisome, but she did put it down. And uh, Tinsley, Sonia, and Leah are sitting like on the, the little couch that's near them, but not on the same couch. And I don't even think they know what's going on. So Dorinda goes through this whole diatribe about, you know what? You're, you're not a permission. There's nothing wrong with it. You're not an alcoholic. So you can do what you want. It's fine. Like, I'm not exactly sure why she's pushing this so much. I think it's odd. I think you really need to take a back seat and let the person who just got off probation make her decision herself. I definitely wouldn't be egging her on that it's fine. You're not an alcoholic. You know what I mean? Elise, who is sitting on the other side of Luann, she said, what are you drinking? And Luann said, oh, I had, that was vodka. I had a couple sips of that. And right away, Dorinda jumps in. It's fine, Elise. She can do what she wants. She's not on probation. There's nothing wrong with it. And Elise said to Luann, are you not in, you don't go to AA? 
Luann starts to turn to her and say, yes, I, I have gone to AA or I am in it or I, I don't know how she phrased that. But Dorinda gets pissed off at Elise. You're not the judge and jury, Elise. What's going on? And Elise said, no, but if you're in AA, you know, it's something you're going to want to resist. Dorinda, mind your own garden. Now we get what might be the first Elise talking head. And she said, you know, I know Dorinda is Luann's drinking buddy, but didn't she just get off of probation and she's in AA? If I were Luann's friend, I would be pulling that drink out of her hand. All right, so boy, Luann is in her element on stage. Chanel introduces her and Luann puts her bedazzled sunglasses on and she dances her way up to the stage to feeling Giovanni. Then to her, I guess her, the bit she's doing is that I've uh, kept a diary and would you like me to read a diary entry? And so she does. And it's a, uh, it's just a really stupid joke about how I told the truth about having two Bellinis on Easter and now I have to blow into a device five times a day. Six, if you count my boyfriend. That's the only joke we heard. And then the one that we knew she was going to tell, which is, all right, I'm thanking everyone for being here. Thank you to my girlfriends for being here. And let me just set the record straight. I never fucked the pirate. Everyone screams and laughs. Sonia jumps to her feet. Yes, you did. You did, you did, you did. It's so funny. And also... Of course you did. You were caught on camera. You were speaking French, but it's not like Bravo can't come up with a translator, which they did. It's I, I just don't think Luann cares that we know. Okay, so Jacques starts and um, in Sonia's confessional, she said, Jacques can be very funny, but nobody can understand him with his accent. And it, I mean, I... He, he's sort of using that in his act. He said, my family is from Texas and they can't understand a word I'm saying. And it's like, uh, that fell flat. And he said, I'm glad you, you all can understand me. Yeah, I mean, it's not going great. In Dorinda's confessional, she's like, yeah, I couldn't understand a word Jacques said. I mean, that's a problem when you're trying to land jokes right? People actually need to hear the words. The problem is because Dorinda couldn't hear him and was just sitting there smiling, she decides to lean over to the girls on the other bench and say, so you think my idea is good about lunch? And Leah nods her head and Tinsley said, about lunch? Yeah. Dorinda's like, no, you're supposed to say it's a great idea. Leah goes, Dorinda, I'm the mediator. Just let, let's save it for the lunch. Sonia is sitting between Leah and Tinsley, and then Dorinda is, like I said, a little bit further away. So Sonia goes, mmm, that food smells good. You know, she's on a cleanse. They're all eating hot dogs or something. I don't know. And Jacques says, excuse me, I am up here doing a show. It's awkward. Sonia goes, oh no, these, these bitches are cackling and I couldn't hear. Luann's like, all right, everybody, let's give a big round of applause for Jacques. That was rough. Guys, all the rest of the comedians are, well, it appears that everybody's falling flat tonight. I mean, we don't really hear much of anybody else. We just see crowd reaction and it's not great. Yeah. At one point, Ramona and Sonia leave to go to the bathroom just so they have something to do. And they're praying that the show is over when they get out. All right, so now the ladies are up at the bar and Sonia in her confessional said, the last thing I want is my girl Lou drinking without me. <laughs> I love drinking with my girl Lou. And now all the girls are going down the slide. Ramona goes, I gotta say, this is the funniest part of the night. So the girls are all standing at the bar and Leah's talking to Dorinda. Dorinda is fixated on this lunch and Leah said you know you're intimidating and she goes I am no and she goes yeah you are then Tinsley comes over and Dorinda goes she said you're intimidated by me Leah goes I didn't say that I said you're intimidating all Dorinda is hearing is that Tinsley is intimidated by her 
Ramona, am I intimidating? Leah, not really. <laughs> In Dorinda's confessional, Leah said Tinsley's intimidated by me. Of course she is. Tinsley's intimidated by a butterfly. Tinsley finally tells Leah, I don't think you should be there for that lunch. I don't really think I need you there, though. And she goes, why? I think it would be good. And then Dorinda comes over and Tinsley said, I think that you and I have something to work on and we should do it without other friends there. Dorinda goes, well, I didn't know you were going to get upset. Again, Tinsley's not upset. She's just saying you and I should talk it out alone, which I agree with. But I, w I didn't hate the idea of Leah being there because I also think things could go off the rail easily for those two. And to have somebody there kind of as a moderator could be helpful. Dorinda said, I thought it would be nice to have her there because she can access a part of you that the rest of us can't. And Leah wants to go. Leah goes, I think you want to have like a real understanding. And Tinsley's like, listen, if there's been a disconnect between me and Dorinda, we can solve it. I don't think we need another person to help us solve that. Dorinda's like, if it makes you uncomfortable, Tinsley, I won't do it. Everything I try to do, Tinsley, is, is not good. Okay, why does it have to be all three of you or nothing, Dorinda? Either you want to have a conversation with Tinsley and try to get to know her better and try to access whatever Leah can access, or you don't. For her to be now just nixing the whole thing, it's kind of manipulative. Anyway, Dorinda just ends up leaving. Tinsley's frustrated. She said Dorinda's trying to act like she's trying to make things work between them. And Tinsley goes, are you though? I mean, you made fun of my watch. You're making fun of me all night. It is what it is. I just don't think those two are a good match. In any case, that is where this episode ends. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. If you would like to be notified every time I have a new video coming out, please click on that bell icon. And as always, leave a comment. I love to hear from you. You guys are so funny. I don't know what it is, especially lately. I am dying laughing when I read through the comments because you have great observations. You have super funny observations. And uh, yeah, I just feel like I'm talking with a bunch of friends and I love it and it's fun. And I thank you guys so, so much. All right. I will be back next week for the next recap of The Real Housewives of New York City. Please be safe. Stay home. When you are in public, please wear a mask. Stay six feet apart whenever you can. And don't forget to wash your hands. I love you guys. I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.